right guys, here it is. I am so excited about this mod. This is Joe Sabo's artwork. He kicks serious butt. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. All the detail from the marquee to the bezel to the control panel is all really, really good. I mean, some of the best I've seen. So let's talk about the control panel for a minute while we're here. So he made a custom acrylic top that already had all the buttons pre-drilled out. So I really didn't have to do much there. However, this is just a small acrylic top. As you can see, it's thin. So it's like a thin plastic, although this is actually thicker than the arcade one-up topper. But, uh, but yeah, so this lays over the actual wood board that I used for the CP. So this wood board is actually DIY Retro Arcades. It's a blank birch wood board. But what I did was I took the overlay and put it on top of the birch wood board and then I drilled the holes. So I basically drew circles or outlines of the, all the button configurations and then drilled them you know, into the board so that I could run the buttons through. So this is a really, really awesome piece. And the way he designed it, it actually comes over the edge. I don't know if you can see that, but see it actually comes over, this lip comes over wider than the control panel. And I think when you back up, it has an overall killer look because of that. I really, really think that looks awesome. So let's take a closer look at the artwork really fast. So his artwork is very, very detailed. As you can see, I mean, I have not seen artwork this good uh, as far as from the arcade one up community uh, and Joe is awesome. So he was saying that he was thinking about extending the artwork. So he was going to have a, um, a the riser art that would extend down. So I think that's really cool. So obviously one of the most special things about this mod is that it is actually running off of an Xbox one. So obviously that's going to that's gonna spark a lot of questions as to how I did that. And we're gonna get into that in a minute. But you will notice that uh, it has, you know, eight buttons on each side. You've got your Sanwa sticks and you've got your start slash options button. Uh, but there's a, a back button on the Xbox controller that you need to have so that you can access the menu systems. So right now, these two buttons are acting as that. The reason why the micro switches are just uh, are just sitting out like this is because I haven't I didn't know where I was going to put these yet. So I realized that's not complete. I just got really excited and wanted to show you guys this mod sooner than later. But but I will end up putting those somewhere. You know, I was thinking they could go here on the front panel, which I've done before. Uh, or what I was really thinking might be cool is putting it somewhere on the side. Although the reason why I didn't want to put it on the side is because I really like this artwork and I didn't want to put the button there. So we'll see. Uh, for right now, that's where it's going to stay, but I might move it. All right, so let's go to the back and see what's powering this thing. Now, okay, so we're around the back now, and the first thing I want to tell you guys is I have not cleaned up any of the wires. It's all really just kind of more of a work in progress, although everything is fully functional right now. So that is the uh, monitor mount that you may have seen on a prior video. I'll have a link that pops up right here if you want to see that. The wire you have hanging down here is actually the switch for the marquee. I'm gonna switch it on and then I'll show you that in a minute. But yeah, that's the lit marquee. Normally I mount this on the cabinet, I just haven't gotten to that yet. So what you, what you really wanna see is what it takes to power all this stuff. So you've got your Xbox One here and you have this little adapter kit right here that um, has a serial adapter. And so this serial adapter actually goes from an encoder board that's on the control panel. You can't see it because it's mounted to the control panel, but there is a controller board there. So that serial connection goes to this breakout box. This breakout box then goes to these little devices here that go from a PlayStation 2 uh, connection and it converts that uh, into an Xbox One connection and then it plugs in via USB on the back. So I'm actually gonna show you guys the diagram of how you do this. Now, I disassembled the tank stick. You can see that right here. I disassembled the tank stick, but um, that's only because I had one. But I did find out that you can actually buy the encoder board and the wiring kit separate. So you may be able to do this same thing without actually owning a tank stick. So kind of cool. So there are probably several other ways you could do this. One of the ways I thought was maybe using a 
arcade, you know, an Xbox One arcade stick. Problem with this one is that in order for the buttons to work, the way this encoder works is you have to actually have an Xbox One joystick plugged or controller, sorry, plugged into this at every at any time. I didn't really want that. Now, I'm not saying that this is the only alternative option. There's probably many of them. Uh, it's just this one works out really well with zero input lag. So there is no input lag that I can see here. And I wanna show that, that to you guys in a second. So I'm gonna flip the cabinet around. I'm gonna talk about a couple more things real quick. And then I'll jump into, we'll jump into uh, gameplay and how this thing works and what options you have to you. All right, so getting back to the front of the cabinet, you can now see the light up marquee. I'll give you a closer look, so hopefully it doesn't bleed too much. It looks really, really good. My only problem I'm having right now, and I'm gonna resolve it at some other point, is I'm getting some light bleed in, so you can see that down below. I gotta fix that. Um, I've actually had that problem before with Scott's marquee. Uh, I think he may have resolved that by now, but you could solve it by putting some tape you know, black tape on the bottom or something like that. All right, so I wanna revisit the control panel just real quick before we get into gameplay. These are Sanwa joysticks. So these are the ones that I decided to go with. Uh, I will have links in the description to these, but these are genuine Sanwas. The only thing that I changed is I put bat tops on them. These did not come with bat tops, they came with ball tops. Now, the problem that I had, and uh, I'll explain this to you right now, is you maybe can't see this on the camera. I'm gonna to try to zoom in quickly. If you look, you can see that's the end of the actual shaft of the, the joystick. Well, you see there's a, there's a connector here. So what happened was because this is actually making the control panel a lot thicker than normal because of this acrylic top, uh, I needed to extend the joystick. So they sell these Sanwa extenders which kind of bring the joystick up a little bit more uh, if you have issues like this where mounting depths are deeper. Uh, so this actually brings the bat top up to a more comfortable level versus being so close to the control panel. Uh, so that's all you do. And I'll, I'll show you that really quick. So if I unscrew this, so if I take this off, you can clearly see that, um, and I scuffed it up a lot when I was mounting it. So uh, my bad. Uh, if you look close on there, you can see that's where that breaking point is, that extender piece right there. And then you just put the bat top on top of that. So, um, so that's how you do it, and it'll extend that out. Now there's one other bat top tip I wanted to give you guys real quick, so just bear with me a second, and I'm gonna bring something over that I think will help with those of you who are having some bat top issues. So uh, give me one second here. Okay, so I'm back, and this is a little tip here, uh, kind of random, but this Loctite right here, this thread locker, is your friend when it comes to using these Sanwa extensions. So what you would do is, and I'm not gonna do it for this because I'm gonna have to take it apart a couple more times, but you put a little bit of the Loctite here, apply, put this, you know, screw this on, and then put a little bit of Loctite uh, on the top here. And then you can put the bat top on and you'll be good to go. It won't move around, trust me. You'll be, you'll be really good, and you'll be happy that you did that because you won't be messing with it, fiddling with it all the time, which I tend to do quite often. So uh, it's a good little tip, and I think it'll help you out. All right, so I'm actually a Street Fighter guy, so I'm not actually a Mortal Kombat guy, really. Um, so I'm very poor at this game, especially the modern ones. I feel like I'm decent at the old ones, but I'm not very good. So anyways, I'm not gonna focus on the gameplay too much. I just wanna show you the functionality of the system and what you can do with it. So I'm gonna set the camera up on the tripod for the best angle to record gameplay, and I'm gonna show you what you can do with this thing. Okay, so first things first, volume. So for the volume, you would use the TV remote. I actually did not put an amp in this, so I'm actually exclusively using the TV volume. So that's how you adjust the volume with the remote. Uh, you could also hook, have the speaker output be uh, controlled by this, so you could actually use this as well with an amp. So anyways, that's not how I have it set up right now. All right, so before we get into Mortal Kombat, I did wanna show you something. So when I hit this button and that, it brings me back to home. So I didn't really go over this much, but you will have full functionality of your Xbox. So um, you know, if you wanted to play other games. So I have some games loaded here that kind of are well suited for this setup. Uh, you have things like the Capcom beat em up bundle. Uh, believe it or not, I will show you this too. Uh, you know, cause like I said, I'm not gonna show a punch of Mortal Kombat gameplay cause I suck at it. But 
there is an option to turn one of the sticks into an analog stick, which allows you to play games like Forza, which is really cool. So you can play Forza Horizon 3, um, you know, whatever it is. The Killer Instinct games, they're all on the, X, on the Xbox uh, for download. Uh, Streets of Rage, you know, the, the Mega Drive Classics collection. I've got Street Fighter 4 on here. I've got the Street Fighter 30th anniversary. So like the cool thing about this is the sky is a little bit the limit because there's so many cool games that you can download and play uh, that it's well beyond a Mortal Kombat cabinet. It just happens to be themed that way. So because it is, we'll start with Mortal Kombat, but I do want to show you some other games after that. So let's get started on Mortal Kombat. Okay, so. I'm gonna press start and we're gonna get this thing going. Don't make fun of me, I am not good at this game, as I said. All right, spear is back forward X. Oh, I got this. Oh, he's getting lucky so far. I never can get this LTRT fatal blow thing to work right for some reason. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So if anybody knows, let me know. I mean, obviously I'm terrible at this, but it'd be nice to know what the heck to do because I'm doing what it says and it doesn't seem to work. All right, clearly very easy is very easy. Watch it, buddy. I will uppercut you all day. Oh, 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 oh. I also don't believe in block, by the way. Block like that button. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, well, I can do that too. Oh, 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 damn. Oh, damn. Oh, dude, dude, oh, jeez, jeez. That's it, no one does that to Scorpion. <laughs> I know what I'll do, I'll punch you in the face. Yeah. Uh-oh, finish him, I definitely don't know what I'm doing there. Ah, damn it, weakest finish ever. Anyways, so let's go to the other stuff. So clearly it plays this game really awesome. You can play two players. It's kick-ass. The joysticks feel good because they're Sanwas. The buttons feel awesome. It's freaking sick. So, but let's go back to the regular Xbox and see what other things we can do. All right. All right, so this is what's cool about this. You can play offline mode or online mode over a network. We're gonna do offline mode. And as you can see, this has got Final Fight on it, which we know Capcom, or which we know Arcade 1UP has a cabinet of this. So let's choose Final Fight. Um, it presents the game in the correct aspect ratio, and it also uh, puts little borders on the side, which is pretty neat. Uh, and I have the scan lines turned on, so you'll see, you'll see how awesome this actually looks. It looks killer with the scan lines on it. It actually looks like pretty much how I remember it looking. Jesus, get over here. Get over here! This guy's got the longest arms ever. Uh, anyway, so obviously this with having the Capcom bundle is really cool because you can play, you know, Final Fight as well as Strider. I believe Strider's on there too. So, oh, sorry about that. Uh, basically this button will allow you to, um, 
get to the options menu and in the options menu you can do a bunch of stuff. You can check out this game on your own, but if I say quit game, it brings me back to uh, the main menu. Actually, Strider is not one of them, I stand corrected. I thought Strider was on this for some reason. But anyways, really cool. So that's just one option for you. And all these games will play amazingly well on this setup. Okay, for the sake of time, let's fast track things a little bit here. So obviously, um, big fan of Streets of Rage and you one, two, and three are on the Xbox as a digital download. And then there's also the Sega Genesis classics. Killer Instinct is there, which is great. And I know a lot of people try to play Killer Instinct on uh, Retro Pi, Raspberry Pi, or whatever, and uh, it requires a PC build. So oftentimes people don't end up getting that playing well. Street Fighter 4, huge fan of that. Obviously, I'm going to be playing a lot of Street Fighter 4 in this cabinet. As you know, I'm a big fan. I actually built the whole entire cabinet based on it, just this game. So, uh, so I'm having fun with this, and it's nice to be able to play this on another system in my house. So big, big fan, and it's really cool to play it in this format. And then if you're super old school, or you know, old super old school to me, you can play yourself some Galaga. There's tons of uh, other retro games that are available for digital download as well that I think you'll have fun with a cabinet like this. So as far as uh, Genesis goes, there's um, a ton of Genesis titles available to you. Uh, you can set scan lines, you can put filters, you can do the side bezels. I can't remember what those are called, I think they're side bezels. But you can do a whole bunch of cool stuff. So really, like I said, sky's the limit. This is a really, really fun build. All right, so I promised you'd be able to play Forza, and you absolutely can. So there's specific um, hot buttons that you can press to reconfigure uh, the way the buttons and joystick react. So you can make the joystick uh, act like an analog stick. So it's pretty cool. So I haven't tested it on other analog stick games. You know, there's going to be some that just play better with a controller than they do, uh, you know, a, an arcade stick. But the, it's really cool that you can do this. All right, guys, it's final thoughts time. So what do I think about this modification? Dude, this is freaking awesome. Super fun. The sky's the limit. You've got access to all of these games. It's just freaking cool. Yes, it, there's a cost involved to do it. Hopefully, after you watch this video, you'll get a guide or some guidance as to how to do it. It's actually not that bad. It was a lot more simple than I thought. Um, so anyways, guys, I, I'm, I'm actually speechless. I'm so excited about this. This, this. this system will get the most use probably out of all of them that I have. So kind of crazy because this is one of those things where my buddy George kind of tried to talk me into doing this mod, and now I, I can't thank him enough. It's awesome. So anyways, I would love to hear what you guys think, so put your comments below. Please like the video if you thought this was neat. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Your support is definitely appreciated and it makes a big difference. And also, uh, hit the notification bell so you can be informed of future videos. Well, that's it guys. Until the next one, we will see you next time.